Our oldest son, Rhett, and I had the opportunity to go spend a few days with some good friends from our church in the Island Park region of Idaho. There were five fathers and about seven young men, and we had an absolute blast. It's hard for me to break away from the many things that I think I must get done, but I'm telling you, I didn't think about those projects one time while I was gone. We rode snowmobiles back into some of the most beautiful, scenic areas of Idaho that I've not only never seen before, but I'm certain we will do this again, more than likely in the summertime, because now I'm curious what it looks like when the snow has melted. We flat had a good time. It was an opportunity for both Rhett and I to get more experience on some high quality snowmobiles and it didn't take long before both of us felt like we had the things figured out, but I think Rhett picked it up a little faster than I did. And by the end of the trip, I found myself contemplating if having a couple of brand new snowmobiles is something we really need around Red Poppy Ranch. On our final day in the area, we woke up to a fresh 10 inches of powder, the clouds parted, the sun came out, and the riding conditions could not have been better. As all of us continued to get more and more comfortable on the snowmobiles, we decided to ride down to Island Park Reservoir, which is a beautiful scenic lake that's currently frozen over. We all took turns riding out on the lake in the fresh powder, and while it was a blast riding on the lake, we noticed that every time we made a pass across the fresh snow, our tracks slowly filled up with water. but we all made it home in one piece. Thank heavens.
on the Starlink app that I have on my phone, it has been telling me that four hours out of the day, there is an obstruction complicating the satellite's ability to do its job. In spite of the snow on the roof, I decided today was a good day to get up there and cut down the old WeBoost antenna, modify the mount, and make the new Starlink satellite fit in its place. I must say that getting up on the roof with this much snow is not one of my better ideas, but nothing ventured, nothing gained, I suppose. After getting on the roof and cutting the antenna down, I noticed that Rhett left in Cedar's car to go pick up our oldest daughter, Sage. So I had to wait a few minutes for him to get back so he could hold the ladder into position so I didn't slide off the roof and get hurt. I got everything in place and waited for his return. Once he returned with Sage, I explained to him that I simply needed him to put his weight against the ladder while I climbed across the roof and slipped the Starlink satellite over the top of the existing galvanized mount that I already had in place. He was doing a great job until the snow shifted and both of us thought that we bought the farm for just a minute. Once I straddled the roof line and got the new Starlink satellite dish properly secured, I waited for the dish to automatically find its new proper position, locking in with whatever satellite it's now connected to. I checked my phone for obstructions and the app said all clear and all of the sudden, our internet is even better than it was before. Since we've been using the Starlink internet, I can't say enough good stuff about it. The upload and download speeds are second to none. This was really one of the last big things in our off-grid life where we wondered if we would ever have good internet services where we live, and the answer is yes.
Okay, in an effort to be up close and personal with our food, we've got liver, tenderloin, heart, and kidneys from one of our meat goats. Uh, we're gonna do it the old faithful way where you just know it's not gonna taste bad. Starting with, um, this is just a portion of the liver. I'm doing this family friendly. So it's basically breaded with our, our, our old faithful fajita seasoning that's good on just about everything. Uh, I just wanna show, I just wanna show uh, Cedar and the kids that you can get just about anything to taste good. So here we go with the liver first. I'm gonna do some liver and onions for myself later to get a real taste of the meat. I've never eaten the um, kidneys and heart out of a goat before, but I have had goat meat before. Uh, this is the part of the goat that should just, the uh, tenderloin, it's not very big, but it should just taste incredible. It's almost a shame to bread it and fry it like this, but I just wanna show the kids, again, the cedar and the kids, that it tastes good. We butchered a 120 pound goat and ended up with about 40 pounds of meat. is uh, tenderloin. Not much of it. Why would I have every piece of liver? Have you ever, you know the liver is it liver like kidding goo. the healthiest organ? It smells like they go. Yeah, yeah, it smells like hay. It smells <laughs> like... It's what liver? It literally smells like cow Take liver. a bite, Reed. Chew, chew it up. You, you take a bite first. Ready? I mean, we'll Reddit, do it at the same time. Me Cheers, Mike. <laughs> me and Red have already eaten it. Do Chew water. It Chew it. Do it, Reed. Chew it. Don't. It's it. super healthy for you. Eat it. Mom, See, Reed's eating it. Up. Eat it. Eat <laughs> that bag. Don't eat it. It's not bad. Oh eat it. Oh, if we're starving, this is what you're going to eat. Yeah. Swallow it down. No, swallow it down. You're a big kid. Reed's eating it. He's like, yeah, good to go. I've never ate a boy before. <laughs> <laughs> she gagged. I can't do it, Dad. Yeah, baby. It tastes so gross. It's just, it doesn't taste like, it tastes just like beef liver. Come on. <laughs> That's what's left of the heart. Everybody liked it. That's what's left of the tenderloin. We are eating that as we speak. So everybody loved, everybody loved the tenderloin, of course. Even the heart is about eaten up. Reed's been eating the heck out of the heart. Yeah, save a piece or two for me. Um, the liver, what do you say, kids? Good! I haven't tried it yet. It was okay. Do you, do you want to take a bite? It actually tastes good. <laughs> no. Keep going. Keep going. No, no. Keep it just gets worse, I Keep promise. Chewing. <laughs> it doesn't I get any better. I don't want to move. So I still have the kidneys soaking. I'm trying to get uh, the backbone to do something with them, but I feel like I need to do a little bit of research on uh, just how to prepare them versus just frying them in uh, vegetable oil. So we'll see.
This winter has been an interesting one. And in the last two weeks, we've gotten nearly three feet of snow. And I found that the best way to get around after this much snow was using snowshoes. I need to get up to the solar panels, sweep them off as good as I can so that we're not using the backup generator any more than we have to. Every year as we go through the seasons, it's an enlightening process, and it seems every year has been different. While it seems like March is the month where the snow starts to melt, we've had snow on the ground as late as May and even into June. But the next process of our life, as we are preparing for summer, is our eager anticipation of the snow melt. But truthfully, the slower the snow melts, the better it is for our situation, the healthier the trees and the plants will be, and the less mud we'll have to deal with. Oh, it's going. <laughs> okay. I was crimping my hair. Rhett and I got home late last night. Uh, we had a really fun time. We're both pretty worn out. It's, it's always fun to take a break and do stuff like that. You got a little bit of snow while we were gone. We but survived you, without you. But you survived without us. We had us. enough power. We had enough water. Yeah, generator didn't run, right? Nope, not one time. Okay. But with only a few of us here, we didn't use as much power either. Right. So that helped. Okay, the so sun came, <laughs> sun came out and the sun's coming out. I, I can hear the batteries cooking off in there. This, by, uh, by what, six days from now, we are supposed to hit 50 degrees. So, no. um, yes, yeah, but we know what's coming. Um, but it's inevitable. Um, we have to get through the mud to get through everything else that comes with the warmer temperatures. Mm -hmm. So we are probably going to be in the heat of it uh, within a week. Uh, the road has been scraped down uh, so low with snow that, that it's not going to take long before that snow is gone. Do you remember back in our high school days when we would like pray for a storm and then as soon as it rained, we would go find the mud on purpose and drive in it? Get our trucks muddy on purpose. That was, um, that was Arizona, <laughs> and the storms were few and far between, and the mud was few and far between. And now we see mud, and we're like, oh. I mean, like some people get their trucks muddy on purpose, but my car and your truck are always muddy just because. Yeah, I wash my truck <laughs> when when it rains, but uh, um, but we know what's around the corner. We know that soon enough we will be complaining about the dust because we're, we don't have enough rain. And so it's just part of the process and we get that. But, but what I'm really looking forward to this year as we get further and further down this, this road uh, of our life of living up here is the struggles are different. Um, I'm really looking forward to gardening this year and seeing if we can do something different. I'm, I'm really looking forward to... We learned last year what grew and what what we what works best and what will yeah. be different. So we're trying to decide how we're going to do the greenhouse. Uh, we're trying to decide if we're going to put the greenhouse up there on the hill. Um, I can't wait to have some of these bigger projects done so I can spend a little bit more time doing some of the smaller projects. But that being said, you know, the bigger projects are we still have big projects. Um, um, we want to do a root cellar of some kind. The kids now want me to build them a hobbit house, which I think is awesome, actually. Um, and so there's probably always going to be, be some sort of bigger projects, but it, it's a process of refinement, I suppose. I've got, the, you know, the, the few big projects this summer is going to be the new roof on this house, changing the, uh, the angles of the front porch and the back. Um, part We've of the got house. It, got it all written down on our board upstairs so yeah. he can wake up every morning and decide yeah, what I need, he wants to do. I, I need to see that stuff. I need to see what I have in front of me. But there's always going to be something else. There's always going to be, I still want to build a log cabin, a, a legit log cabin, probably um, copying the original homestead cabin from our family ranch over in uh, the neighboring community over in Bear Lake. But the... Uh, so you say like the next 10 years, probably we have projects. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll always have projects, but I'm looking forward to getting better at 
like I want to see putting what putting the solar panels on the roof does next winter. You know, it's it's yeah. There's there's always something. I got I want to get that skid steer first thing tomorrow morning. I'm gonna go and pull the hydraulic filter off of the skid steer. I'm gonna open that thing up and inspect it for metal shavings to see if that's an indication that the pump has failed. I'm almost positive it's the pump. Then I'm gonna pull the pump off. There's there's a couple of companies not too far away that I hope can rebuild that pump. And hopefully it's just the one pump, but it, it could also be drive motors as well in that thing. But I wanna get that thing on the road and get it figured out. Rhett's truck, we need to get finished and get it out of the shop. We need to get back on the shop and get the shop finished. <laughs> um, there's always going to be something but this is the life that we chose and 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 i need things to do i need things to uh that, that's just how i work that's how my I, a matter of fact i think most men need things to do because not only is it good does it feel good to look at a list and cross off some of those things on that list but that sense of accomplishment i think does something in our brain i would say human nature i don't think it's just Humans, a man yeah. thing my, I mean, my list is just as long as yours but my list is completely different sure than your list for yeah. sure. Accomplishment and, 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 and uh, success, I suppose, in this lifestyle that we choose, as we get better and better and better at it, for sure it's a good feeling. It's a good, good feeling to know that, that, that the things that were uh, incredible challenges to us in the past are no longer uh, as, as big of a concern. So anyway. It's kind of repetitive stuff. I mean, it's constantly. There, there will be. The mud, the snow. The rain, the whatever. Chopping wood, chopping wood. wood uh, I'm okay with that though. Kids, I don't... dogs, just life. Yeah, it's yeah. And we'll, we will. Uh, mundane, I guess. Sometimes some of the some of the things. And as the world turns, I'm sure our kids will have kids, and we'll be able to share this life with them as well. And so, anyway, uh, my hope is that this summer, that that just like you guys saw in the video earlier with Rhett and I taking a few days to go ride snowmobiles, it's hard for me to do that stuff. Uh, but I don't wanna be that, that father that uh, my kids maybe wish that I did more of that stuff. I have memories of, of doing things with my dad, uh, but not a ton, not a ton. It, oftentimes it was me and my brothers and my dad and very rarely was it just me and my dad. And well, so what's that saying that on your headstone you don't want it to say, I wish I would have worked a little bit more? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I told Callie and Reed that we would spend time up on the public land uh, right near where we live here. We've got literally thousands and thousands of acres of public land where we can go camp and we can kind of go, um, you know, explore and just kind of get to know it better, which will then help me w this fall when hunting season kicks off. And so anyway, I, I hope that we can slow down a tad, I suppose, and not have such big projects in front of us. But at the same time, um, I love it. I love, I, there will never be a day when there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's you know, for sure. I, 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 I would venture to say my body will fail before I cross everything off that list. No, I but, hope not. Uh, well, I, I hope to also be an old man when that happens. But anyway, we hope you guys are doing good. We, uh, we uh, will be get right back on things starting tomorrow and, and the next couple of videos should be around the skid steer and definitely going to be around the snow melt around here and just how things, how crazy things get. My truck is still in the shop. I, I was hoping he would send me a text. Actually, I haven't even been able to receive texts because my, uh, my new phone is not connected to the, the network. So anyway. So just... you have a lot of time on your hands. Playing, yeah. playing a lot of golf <laughs> on my uh, phone. So. Anyway. Well, let's go back and look at the list and get going on that. Be safe. <laughs>